Hey man, thank you all. Uh, welcome back. We're going to get started with our uh, morning uh, service now. Uh, uh, I think we had a, a, a good Bible study this morning. Amen. Uh, Amen. And, and see, that, that's what coming to church is all about. It's about uh, maturing in Christ so that you're able to have substance. So when you leave out and walk out of the door, uh, when, when situations arise, you have the substance to help you out. Because most churches, you, when you go, you run around and dance, you feel good. But when you walk out back into the real world, you know, then, you, you know, uh, you, you, when you walk into the real world, you have a, a problem because you have no substance. You see, because it's not how high you jump when you're in the spirit, but it's how straight you walk when your feet hit the ground. You see, so there's a difference. Uh, so, but, but I thank God for that. Uh, I forgot the programs this morning, so we don't have programs. Uh, I'm human, so forgive me. Uh, but, uh, but normally we uh, go through the announcements. I, I wanted to say uh, the morning Bible study calls on uh, Monday mornings, I still do those. Uh, I haven't talked about them in a while, but I still do those so you can call in. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I normally do it about 6.30 now. I don't do it at 7 because i got to get up a little earlier now. So I do them at 6.30 on Monday mornings, but you can catch the playback number. Uh, and the playback number is 712-432-1202. And then the access code is 825-675-POUND sign. And uh, once you do that, it's gonna ask you to put in a reference number. Now you can go from reference number two, I think it's about, should be about 20 now. And you can listen to all the different ones that I've done. So it should, it should be about 20 something now. Uh, but you could do that. And uh, just to hear the most recent message, just press pound again and it'll take you to the most recent message. Uh, but let's uh, continue to pray for Sister Marcia Hall. Uh, continue to pray for Sister uh, Cheryl Freeman Wilson. Right here. And, uh, Amen. Let's continue to pray for her. Uh, she's going through something of her own. And, you know, sometimes we, we go through things in life and, you know, we're human, so we kind of feel down sometimes because we're going through. Yeah. Uh, but that's what prayer is for, to oh, yeah. uh, keep our hearts soft towards Amen. God and towards men. Yeah, so uh, we truly are praying for you uh, that you make it through. Uh, and I ask that you all, let's just pray for one another. Oh, yeah. uh, let's pray for one another uh, because it keeps our hearts soft towards God and soft towards men. Uh, also, uh, 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 Monday, uh, Wednesday nights we have our Bible studies. Uh, the address uh, you can get if you don't have it, we'll give it to one of you. Uh, it's at one of the saints' house, so I don't want to put the address online. So, uh, if you do want to attend, it's Wednesday nights from seven fifteen to eight fifteen. Uh, ask one of us in here, or ask me, and I'll give you the address to the location of Bible study on Wednesdays. Uh, we're going to the Book of Acts on Wednesdays, and so we have a uh, <clears throat> we have a good time in the Lord, even in the Bible studies, amen, because amen. Uh, Acts is that transitional book that's hard to be understood, and so we've been going through it, uh, and, and we've been doing that. So, uh, but let's uh, get to it. Uh, I'm not going to be too long this morning. Uh, we took up the time in uh, in Romans, and uh, really, we can go home. Uh, but I'm going to preach this message here and I'm going to give you a little something. Uh, go with me to Hebrews chapter 7. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter number 7. Uh, I, I want to explain something here. And I, I want to come from the topic uh, Who is Melchizedek? Who is Melchizedek? And, and, you know, this is the issue with uh, Christianity today. Because we don't really understand who he is and what his purpose is, we confuse a lot of things. And so Hebrews chapter 7, I'm going to come from this now. Uh, for those of us that are visiting with us and that are new, uh, I'm going to go through uh, our chart here. Because this is your whole Bible, all on this one, on this one board. Right? And what happens is Adam, Noah, everybody here were Gentile people in that they were a part of the Gentile nations. Gentiles in the scripture just means nations. Right? So everybody was a part of the Gentile nations. God chose the Gentile Abraham, who was of the uh, uh, God made him of the Hebrew people. And through his generation, 
God gave, God gave Abraham a promise. And through that promise, God fortified the promise through the law, which he only gave to Israel. Right? Now, we say Jew, but let me, let me, let me say this to, uh, to kind of clear some minds here. The Hebrew people took on the Jewish religion, which is Judaism. So when we say Jews today, we're saying the Hebrew people who follow the law of Judaism, which is that law, right? So God took away the Hebrew man Abraham out of the Gentile nations, set apart his people, the nation of Israel, gave them the law, and he operated like that. As the rest of the nations, the rest of the Gentiles, were never in the plan of salvation. We were always down here, right? So if you're not a Hebrew of a Hebrew descent. Hebrew is their nationality and race. Jew is their religion. So if you're not a Hebrew people, then you are down here. Right? It's not until you get to out here where God put their program on hold, the Hebrew people, Israel as a nation, and said, Paul said, there's no difference now between Jew or Gentile. There's no difference now. Everybody is under this dispensation of grace because God has broken down that wall of partition because the wall of partition was this law that was only given to who? Israel. So when we go through the books of, of Genesis through Acts, Genesis to Malachi is Old Testament. Matthew to John is still considered Old Testament simply because it speaks about the what? Law, right? The book of Acts is considered Old Testament until it gets to Acts 9 with the conversion of Paul. From Romans to Philemon, Paul's 13 epistles, that's everybody today who's living today, whether you're Jew or Gentile, you can be saved today. And let me put it this way, whether you're Hebrew or Greek, because if you're a Jew, that means you still got this religion of the what? Law. So anybody today, if you're of Israeli descent, Hebrew descent, or if you're a part of the Gentile nations, you're saved today by grace through faith. There is no difference. God is dealing with everybody. That's why it goes down here. God is dealing with every man according to his own faith. Right? He's not dealing with any nations. He's dealing with individual people. And in the books of Hebrews to Revelation, the books of Hebrews to Revelation, God will continue his program for Israel and for the Hebrew people that he put on hold. And that's why this chart looks like this. Now we know the tribulation and those things for the Hebrew people did not start yet. Why? Because God changed the program and offered what? The dispensation of grace. Right? So now, I want to talk about this book of Hebrews because people confuse the book of Hebrews for our doctrine today. Most people that when you talk to most preachers and you ask them who wrote the book of Hebrews, they're gonna tell you Paul. So I, I, I wanna dispel this thing because we know that Hebrews, the revelation is talking to who? Israel, right? Now, when, uh, when, I was, when we first started the book of Romans, I said, isn't it interesting how the book of Romans is talking to who? The Romans. Romans, Gentile people. The book of Hebrews is talking to who? Hebrew. Hebrew people. How do you not get that? You know, it's talking to Hebrew people. So once again, if you're not a Hebrew over here in this dispensation, it's not talking to you. Hebrews through Revelation is only talking to the nation of Israel. Because right here, after we're raptured out, God will continue his program with that one nation that he set apart. Go to Hebrews 7. I want to talk to you about this issue of Melchizedek. Because people use Melchizedek to condone tithing today. People use the issue of Melchizedek to condone, uh, uh, not condone, but to put Hebrews in agreement with Paul's epistles. But there's a difference, and we're going to go through it. Uh, verse, chapter number 7, verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of what? Salem. Salem, priest of the most what? High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Now, this is a uh, passage out of Genesis 14. Now, let's look at Melchizedek. It says he was the what? King of what? 
Salem. Right? He was the king of Salem. What is Salem? The term Salem in itself means what? Peace. It means peace. So he was the what? King of peace. Right? Now, I want you to notice this because I preached a message uh, a couple weeks ago that said, is Jesus Christ your Messiah or is he your what? Amen. Man. So we're going to get to this issue of high priest. Right? So that's who Melchizedek was. But he's the king of Salem. He's the king of peace. And Isaiah 9, it speaks about that there, will be, there was one born unto you who will be the wonderful counselor, the prince of Peace. peace. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, King of Salem. Salem is just short for the peace, uh, and it's Jerusalem. Jerusalem. The city of Jehovah and the city of peace. Jerusalem. So we know in Jerusalem is when Jesus Christ is going to come back and what? Step foot on the Mount of what? All right. Wow. right? So, uh, priest of the Most High God. Notice that he was a what? Priest. 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 Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and what? Blessed, Blessed him. He blessed him. He was the king of Salem, king of peace. He was a priest of the Most High God, and he blessed Abraham. We're going to get to this now. Stay with me. All right. Verse 2. To whom also Abraham gave a what? Tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, king of what? Right. And after that, also king of what? Salem. Which is? King of peace. Now, let, let, let's go back with me to Genesis 14. I want you to see something. Genesis 14. Try to keep your place here. Keep your place in Hebrews, but go to Genesis 14. Uh, let's go to verse number 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chad Chad Lamor and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shaba, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which had delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Now, Go back with me to and verse 21. The king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the person to take the goods to thyself. Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I lift up my hand. And he goes through that. And go back to Hebrews with me. I, I wanted you to see that that's where he's quoting that passage from. <laughs> now, the Hebrew people understood there's nobody in the scripture who's greater than Abraham. When you talk to a Jewish person, there's nobody in the scripture who's greater than Father Abraham. They have respect for Father Abraham. But what God is going to do, because the Hebrew people at the beginning of Hebrews 1, it says God at sundry times. What he's doing is that he said, now this dispensation of grace is over. I'm calling the Hebrew people back to myself. That's why he doesn't give an author of it. He gives himself. Because the Hebrew people, now I'm bringing you back to myself. Right? So what God is going to do is say, listen, your father Abraham, there's one greater than him. <laughs> That's what he's going to show you by Melchizedek. Right? Mm -hmm. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth. But remember, in verse 1, he blessed who? Abraham. Abraham. Then Abraham gave a tenth, Hebrews 72. First being an interpretation, king of what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Now all of these things are going to signify Jesus Christ. King of righteousness. He's the what? King of peace. Verse 3, without what? Father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made, notice this, but made like unto the what? Son of God. Abided a priest, what? Continually. Who is this person, Melchizedek? Now, it said in the Jewish culture, the genealogy of a person is very important. Very important. Notice Melchizedek had what? No father, no mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but he was made like unto Jesus Christ. Notice now, uh, notice this. He had.
had Jesus Christ in the beginning had no beginning because he was he was and is God. He had no beginning. He has no beginning, right? He has no mother and father who uh, 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 begat him. Because remember when I said in the book of Matthew, when it talks about the genealogy of Jesus Christ, it doesn't say he was begatten of Joseph. Because Joseph didn't begat him. Begat means to give life to. Joseph, his earthly father, his stepfather, did not give life to him. That's why he's the only person in the genealogy that it does not say Joseph begat him. It just says he was born of the woman. Right? Mm -hmm. He had no beginning. He had no end. Now we know that he died, but the same person who died still what? Yes. Lives. Right? So, uh, now, uh, uh, like unto the Son of God, abided a what? Priest continually. The nation of Israel had what? Priests, high priests. Any religion today that tries to copycat them has what? Priests. Priest. You notice that? Mm -hmm. Catholics have the Roman Catholic priests mm -hmm. who you have to go in and make confession to. Mm -hmm. That's a mockery of the nation of Israel. That's right. Mm -hmm. right? The every religion, because we know that from last week, there's only what? One religion, true religion. And God gave that to the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. So anybody else, you notice they always have to have priests. Yeah. Even when uh, the organization I left from, we dressed as priests. When it was a, an official day or something, they had the little wow. white collars on and all that. That's a bunch of foolishness because now we don't need that anymore because we're not a kingdom of priests. Go with me to uh, Exodus 19. <laughs> Exodus 19. <laughs> because what, what we're doing when we dress like that is we're trying to be Israel. Right? Uh, uh, the, uh, we, we call it a, we call it the, the organization I left from, we call it a holy convocation that they go to every year. If you look at Leviticus 23, it talks about the feast days of Israel was called the holy convocation. See, they're trying to be Israel. You see that? Uh, what did I say? Exodus 19. Let's start at verse 3. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of who? Jacob. Jacob. Tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will what? Obey my voice indeed, and keep my what? Covenant. Covenant. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for the earth is what? Mine. Uh oh, now look at verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Now, who is Melchizedek? He was, a, he was a priest, every king, right? Listen to this. And then it says, and a holy what? Nation. Not nations, but nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of who? Israel. Israel. This is when the covenant started. Mm -hmm. Hebrews talks about the new covenant, mm -hmm. right? Most people, because they think Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, try to put us under the new covenant. And when you really listen to these people, if we're under the new covenant, they say we have the new covenant right now. We can't have the new covenant right now because the new covenant can't happen until Jesus Christ comes back. So most people who preach from Hebrews, what they're saying is that we now have the new covenant. Which even if that was our program, the new covenant would not be ushered in until Jesus Christ steps foot on the Mount of Olives. Before that happens, you have to have the tribulation. So any preacher who teaches that we have the, we're under the new covenant, what they're telling you is that, listen, you're really not saved yet. Because the new covenant won't start till out here. So if you want to be under the new covenant, understand that you do not have salvation as a present possession. Because you won't get it until out here. That's when he's going to give his covenant, and it's only going to be to the house of who? Israel. Israel. Hebrew people. He's writing a book to Hebrew people. Mm. Go back with me to Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Even Peter talks about it. He says that you will be a what? Royal priesthood. priesthood. Notice that the, the kingdom were to be a kingdom of priests. The earthly kingdom has to be a kingdom of priests. What was the job of a priest? 
give out the law. To give out the law. That was the only job. So if you put me under the new covenant, what you're doing is saying I have to follow those laws. Mm. You see, because, because notice this, notice this. Under the new covenant, they're going to still keep the what? Law. Mm -hmm. But under the new covenant, they'll be able to keep the law because God will write it in their what? Hearts. Hearts. So they're going to receive covenant grace. Our program today, we receive pure grace because we don't have to keep no what? No. Law. There's a difference. Notice now, the Hebrew people always are going to have that law, which was the only religion God ever gave. Mm -hmm. But the book of Hebrews is saying that, listen, continue to work. Right? Stay steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Continue to work. Continue to do these things. Why? Because that day in Matthew 3 and 11, I will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and you won't be able to break my law no more. Mm -hmm. So either way, they still got to what? Do the law. Mm -hmm. So we know back here they couldn't keep the law. And most times, uh, keeping the law back here was not just... Break, not, not just doing everything perfectly. Keeping the law means to have sin but giving the proper sacrifice. Mm. Because Paul said, I was blameless in the law. Mm. Now, did Paul ever not sin? No, that's not what he's saying. He said, even when I sinned, I gave the proper sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's saying there. So uh, go back to uh, Romans, uh, not Romans, Hebrews 7 and 4. Now, I want you to understand that a priest was only given to the nation of who? Israel because they were to be a kingdom of priests. The word Canaan, the land which God promised them, means kingdom of priests. Right? So that's what they were to be. So anybody who puts you under the new covenant is teaching erroneously. That is not your doctrine. First of all, you're not a Hebrew people. You, if you weren't a part of the last covenant, how could you be part of the new covenant? And then if you're a part of the new covenant, you don't have salvation today. Because God is not going to operate two programs at one time. Right? When we leave, the law will be back in effect over here. But we know today, Paul says, Romans 6 and 14, for ye are not under the law, but under what? Grace. Grace. Romans 10 and 4, Paul says, for Christ is the end of the law to everyone that believes. We don't have to perform no laws today. Right? The oper law just means operating principle. Our operating principle today is the gospel of grace. Mm -hmm. The operating principle of the law for Israel was those 633, mm -hmm. which will be back in effect out here. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a part of the new covenant, be my guest. But I'm telling you, like Paul says, a more excellent way. Mm -hmm. See, a more excellent way is just believe on the work that he already did. Right? Hebrew, uh, Hebrews 7 and 4. Now consider how great this man was. Talking about Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. unto, e unto whom even the who? Abraham. The patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils to. Mm -hmm. This man must be great. If you talk to a Jewish person today, if you tell them, listen, Paul is your apostle, not Abraham. Abraham is not. They, boy, they're going to do something to you. Mm -hmm. Because Abraham is their, their, their guy. We are sons of Abraham. Yeah. They don't care nothing about Paul. They don't care nothing about nothing. They care about Abraham. Because God gave that promise to Abraham. We, but, but notice here. You are not just a son of Abraham. Uh, 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 Paul is going to tell us in Romans 9. That ye that of Israel are not all Israel. Because just because you're in Israel. Don't mean you're part of the nation of Israel. Because God says I will take a foolish nation out of that nation. Notice when he said that, he didn't say, I will take a foolish nation out of the nations. He said, I will take a foolish nation out of that nation. Which means he took the little flock, the believing remnant in Israel, out of apostate Israel. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's what he's going to do. Now consider how great this man was. Verse 5. And verily, they that are of the sons of who? Levi. Levi the Levitical priesthood. Were the ones who gave God's law and his word. Mm -hmm. Now, Moses was of the Levitical priesthood. Aaron 
was of the Levitical priesthood. Moses' sister Miriam, who was a prophetess, she was of the Levitical priesthood. Anybody who spoke God's word had to be of the Levitical priesthood. The Levitical priesthood was who you gave the tithe to, right? The Levitical priesthood were the only ones that could accept tithing. Why? Because God never gave them an inheritance mm -hmm. of land. Mm -hmm. He gave it to the, the 11 brothers of Israel, the other 12, the other 11 tribes. But he said, Levi will be set apart and I will have his brothers give him tithe. Mm -hmm. So, verse 5. And verily they that are the sons of Levi who received the office of the what? Priesthood have a commandment. That's it right there. Mm -hmm. To take what? Tithes. So if you're not of the Levitical priesthood today, you don't have a commandment to take time. Wow. Right? Let's keep reading. Who are you to take the tithes from? Or uh, why? To take tithes of the people according to the law. If I'm not under the law but I'm under grace, how do I take tithes? First of all, I'm not under the Levitical priesthood and the law doesn't mean anything to me today because Christ has fulfilled that. That is of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. What he's saying is that of the 12 tribes came out of the loins of Abraham, but that one nation, his brothers are going to give him time. Because they were to do the work and to teach the law of, Ab of, of God. Right? So, if, so when we see this, the Levitical priesthood were great people in the nation of Israel because they had the law. Moses was the deliverer of the law. He was a Levite. Anybody down through the years were Levites and they taught the word of God. Anybody who was a priest or prophet, they were of the Levitical priesthood. Now, was Jesus Christ of the Levitical priesthood? No. Trivia. He wasn't? No. no. Well, how is he going to be their priesthood? Okay, we're going to get to it. Let's go, y'all study. Let's go. Verse 6. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham. Uh-oh. <laughs> Who is this Melchizedek? He's not of the Levitical tribe, but yet he received tithe of who? Amen. Uh oh, something strange now. <laughs> and he blessed him that had the promises. See what God is doing. I, oh man, when you study this Bible, you just it's just give, it's just joyous. Listen, what God is doing is that listen, He's showing the Hebrew people, the Book of Hebrews. He's showing them here that listen. Abraham was great. I know that. The Levitical priesthood was great. They had my word. But there's a man who's greater than them. Right. By the order of Melchizedek. <laughs> Notice Melchizedek is only mentioned three times. In the book of Genesis 14, Psalms 110 and verse 4, and then in the book of Hebrews. So if Paul never makes an issue of tithing and Melchizedek, why do we do it? If Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles today, then why do we take this issue of Melchizedek and tithing and try to use it today? If God wanted the body of Christ to know about tithing and Melchizedek, he would have had Paul tell us. Amen. See, but he didn't because there's a reason for Melchizedek. Even though, they, because people like to say, well, they pay tithe was not a commandment. Because Abraham did it even before the law. Go with me to Genesis 26 real quick. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I want you to see this. I don't want to quote it, I want you to see it. <laughs> Genesis 26 and uh, I think it's 15. Uh, no, it's not 15. Uh, what did I say? 26? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 26. 26 and 5. Genesis 26 and 5. Uh, let's go to 4. Genesis 26 and 4. And I, God, I will make thy seed, Abraham, to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now, mind you, Israel was supposed to be the channel of the Gentiles to bring them to God. So that's why it says nations. Now, listen to verse 5. Now, this is before the law, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen to what God says. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, voice and what? 
kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my law. Listen, the law wasn't written down until Exodus, but God was always giving man his law. So you cannot say because Abraham tied before the law that it's for us today. No, you can't say that. Why? Because he tied to the order of Melchizedek for a reason. Because he was obeying God's laws and statutes. Because God wanted the Hebrew people to know there's somebody even greater than your father Abraham. Mm -hmm. And you pay tithe to him. Because he would say under the new covenant today, we pay tithe to God. Because they paid it to Melchizedek. Yeah, they paid it for a reason because he was their high priest. Our high priest today is nobody. <laughs> because Paul does not mention Jesus as our high priest, but our what? Head over and we're his body. Notice the differences now. Go back to Hebrews. Go back to Hebrews. Let's go. Uh, matter of fact, before that, yeah, let's go to John 8. Go to John 8 and 58 real quick. Thank you, Pastor. This is going to help me out here. John 8 and 58. John 8 and 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. I am. Jesus. So Jesus had no beginning. He had no end. So before Abraham was, I what? Am. See, now what God is doing, he's going to tell you who Melchizedek was. Because nobody, we never knew. People always say, I remember I had a question, uh, 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 when I was at my old church, I had a somebody had a question about who is Melchizedek, and at the time I used wisdom of words because I didn't know, you know. So I just told him this. Is, you know, I just told him what I knew at the time because I didn't know because I couldn't find in the scriptures, and I didn't know at that time how to rightly divide. So I didn't know. I had no clue of who this guy was because he had no beginning, he had no end. I didn't know. Right. But now. But now, see when you understand and study the scripture rightly divided, I can preach on this thing now. Because I understand who he is. Because he was a typology of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. For the Hebrew people. Mm -hmm. verse, Hebrews 7, verse number 6. And received tithes of Abraham and blessed him and had the promise. 7. And without all contradiction, the less Abraham is blessed of the better. Mm -hmm. Melchizedek. Jesus. And here, men that die receive tithes. But there he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth. Mm -hmm. Listen, what he's saying is that everybody in the Levitical priesthood dies. Mm -hmm. Because we know in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, in Adam all die. But in Jesus Christ, we all live. Come on now. See, listen, what, what God is doing, he says, listen, after the order of Abraham, after the order of the Levitical priesthood, who were great people, there's one even greater than them. Mm -hmm. Even Jonah. The people of Nineveh were saved by Jonah, but he said, listen, there's one greater than Jonah. Yeah. <laughs> See, because Israel always needed a sign. So what God is doing, he's showing them that, listen, this was a sign unto you, and now because I'm about to usher in this new covenant, because out here they're going to be reading this, going through that tribulation period, and said, if I could just hang on, I'll receive the promise of the covenant. Mm -hmm. But he that received them of, of whom it is witness that he what? Liveth. Jesus Christ liveth. Verse 9. And as I may say so, Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. <laughs> Listen. The Levites received the tithe, but then they themselves also had to pay tithe. That's right. So that means that even these preachers who want to take tithe, you need to be paying tithe yourself. So which means it's really that we shouldn't give you no tithe because you, all you're going to do is give it back. Listen, and you got to understand, the tithe in that day was land and crops. That's why I said I should have meat in my storehouse because when they gave a tithe at the feast days, 
the, the, the Levites gave a tithe back and they ate and had a feast. Mm -hmm. That's why it was called the Feast of Days, the festivals. Mm -hmm. So when they gave a tithe, they, and the Levites gave a tithe back and they all ate. Mm -hmm. It was not money. Right? Look at this. For he was yet in the loins of his what? Father when Melchizedek met him. Levi was not even born when Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek. Right? He was still in the loins of his father and still paid tithe. Because Abraham, Levi, that's just like my mother. While I was in my mother and she did something, I obviously did it too because I'm in her. So what God is saying is that the Levites paid tithe to Melchizedek even while they were before they were even born because they were in the loins of their father Abraham. So what God is pointing out is that there is one greater than Abraham, one greater than the Levitical priesthood. Uh, go to Psalms 110 really quick. I want you to see this. We got run out of time. I want to get this point across. Get it. But Psalms 110 and 4. This is the only other mention in the Old Testament. <laughs> 